This video is not for kids. Go do your homework. So I got Julie. <laughs> Have you ever done something and you're not sure exactly why and you kind of don't remember doing it in the first place? <laughs> um, yeah, that explains this because um, I don't even have Josefina yet and um, because I mainly collect 80s Pleasant Company and um, basically like Pleasant Roland era things, um, it's completely like idiotic that I even bought this doll in the first place. Um, and truth be told, I actually haven't even laid eyes on her. I got her in the mail, closed my eyes and opened the box just to <laughs> like to smell the doll to make sure she didn't smell like cat or anything but um once i knew that she smelled decent i actually kind of put her away because i kind of wanted to do a live reaction uh for this doll um for youtube so that's what we're gonna do today <laughs> so yeah i am not a nap person but one weekend this was a couple weeks ago i've actually had this doll for a while now and i still don't even know what she looks like um but i took uh, like i just had had a long week and was tired and i ended up just taking a nap and it was one of those naps where you fall asleep and you wake up and you don't even remember what city you live in um and I, as usual like the first thing I do when I wake up and this is every single day this is part of one of my secrets for getting like all this awesome stuff that I have um is that first of all I'm gonna put this down because I'm sick of holding this doll because the box is kind of dirty uh anyway um so what was I saying um yeah so I had napped so hard and I woke up and like the first thing I do every time I wake up whether it's from a nap or sleeping like for the night uh I check eBay and Mercari and so um yeah I opened up Mercari and there was a Julie doll on there for like um I don't even remember how much I think it was like uh she was like over a hundred dollars but I basically put in the lowest like possible offer um just like lowball the seller and be like eh, whatever let's see if I get her and they accepted my offer so I was like what the hell did I just do um but I've always really liked the doll like Julie I think she's such a cool doll and um you know I'm kind of like 50 50 on the 70s aesthetic like some things I really really love from that era and some other things like you know avocado colored refrigerators and toilets I feel like we can leave in the past but um yeah I'd been kind of thinking about getting her at some point and I just, you know, like I said, I just threw a low ball at the seller and they took it. So I guess she's mine now. Um, but yeah, without like uh, rambling too much more, uh, I'm going to get her open and kind of have a look at her so we can kind of see. Um, I guess you just saw a quick preview of her. But um, yeah, I got a first edition Julie or as far as I know, first edition. I don't think it really matters much because these were um, I think she was made in like 2007, like when she was released. So um, I don't think they probably varied too much um, until they changed her to be forever. But anyway, I'm going to take her out of the box and see what I think. All right, I'm gonna have to do this standing because I don't have a table in here. Um, so like just the first impressions looking at her through the box, I think she's really cute. And I love the Josefina mold, um, which is why it's kind of like, it feels like it should be a crime that I don't have Josefina, but I have this doll. But um, yeah, like I said, I got her cheap, so whatever. Um, but anyway, yeah, she is super duper cute. I really love the Josefina face mold. Um, and again, I wanted to get the first edition of this doll because I really prefer her meat outfit. Um, from like 2007 versus the one when they changed everything to Be Forever. Um, I kind of agree with everybody else, like their opinion that the Be Forever one kind of looks like a Halloween costume. I mean, it's not ugly or anything. It's just, you know, it doesn't seem like as authentic to me, like historically accurate. Um, but anyway, I'm having trouble getting this doll out of the box. All right, so I got the lid off the box and we can see here, yeah, she's super cute. Um, you know, very quintessentially 70s. I, this doll actually came with her book and the, is this still a hair care tag? The old ones, this used to be um, like inf information like on how to take care of their hair. But yeah, you got doll hair care, doll cleaning, earrings, all that stuff. Um, I'm probably not gonna read all that on camera. Um, but yeah, she's got her book, Meet Julie. Can you see that? <laughs> so exciting right um i actually kind of want to read this book i might at some point even though it's kind of it looks like it's sealed maybe actually no it's not i can get that off without um destroying like the mint conditionness of it um so yeah i might give that a read at some point <laughs> if i don't sell her before um, i get a chance but um yeah, she doesn't have a smell, which I really love. Like I've complained about in past videos, sometimes dolls show up and they just, you know, this is a vintage, well, may, maybe not technically vintage, but somebody's owned it before I have. And a lot of times they pick up smells and you're just like, oh boy. Um, but yeah, she smells good if anybody cares. Um, 
But yeah, and super duper cute. She's kind of everything that I had imagined in a Julie doll as well. Like, um, you know, I haven't had a whole lot of Mattel dolls in my day, you know, because I've only been collecting for a few years. Um, so I've only seen a few Mattel era dolls in person. I think my first like reaction to them is like the vinyl feels really hard. I'm not like super used to like being able to like squeezing their arms and they basically like rock hard. Like most of the dolls I have, like um, these dolls, you can squeeze them and they're about as squishy as dog toys because they're like 1986 and 1987 Pleasant Company era American Girl dolls. Um, but yeah, this still, I would say the quality on this is still really good. Um, and that kind of holds true to like a lot of the um, Mattel era American Girl dolls I've gotten before too is um, I just, I don't know. I think there's been so much like smack talk about um, all the changes that were made over the years, um, you know, with when they transitioned from Pleasant Company to the Mattel ownership that you kind of get in your head that like, these are just going to be like, just, you know, terrible dollar store quality dolls. But I would still say this is a very high quality doll. Um, lots of pieces in her meat outfit, which I really love. I think this is such a cute outfit. And like I've said, like, um, at some point I might actually get some of Julie's collection. I'm not totally sure, you know, um, there are a few pieces in it I really like. Um, but all that's to say is like the meat outfit is actually one of the pieces of hers that I really do like. I think this like, would you call this like a peasant blouse? Um, I'm not like a super knowledgeable in terms of, uh, fashion, particularly historical fashion. And, um, I actually wasn't alive in the seventies, believe it or not. I know a lot of you think I'm an old dinosaur, but, um, you know, but the funny thing too is actually because I grew up in a small rural town, I do feel like, especially like before the age of the internet, a lot of the stuff that we were getting and experiencing, um, were things that kind of like took their time getting to us from like bigger cities and, um, like suburban eras. So, or suburban areas. So I feel like a lot of things that I associate with like the mid eighties might actually be like early eighties, late seventies. So, um, I guess take all that with a grain of salt, even though I didn't live with, like, I wasn't alive when all this stuff came out. I feel like I still experienced it a bit because being in a rural area, I feel like a lot of this stuff kind of hung around longer than it did in more trendy areas. Um, but anyway, yeah, all that's to say, I really love this doll. I think she is super cute in this outfit. I really love this blouse that's on top of everything. And again, uh, this doll is pretty much mint condition. I mean, her hair is, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is definitely Jan Brady. I mean, I know that the Brady Bunch must have been like a huge influence um, on the design team when they were working on this doll. And I mean, this is giving like, <laughs> hang on one second. I mean, is that not Jan Brady from like the Brady Bunch movie, like from the 90s? <laughs> like that is my, one of my favorite movies ever. And if you haven't seen it, like it is so, so funny. Um, and I know I'm talking more about like random things than actually the doll. Um, I'm feeling very chaotic today, but um, it's one of my favorite movies if you haven't seen it. Um, they basically take the Brady Bunch and put them in the 90s, like in everything like that you can imagine from the 90s, like the grunge era and everything but um, it's got a brilliant cast and Jennifer Elise Cox, who plays Jan Brady is absolutely brilliant in that movie. So like, I look at this and just think of, you know, nineties Jan Brady. She's like, there's got to be a way to make $20,000, <laughs> but you know, and the iconic, like, oh my God, look at her hair, dude. This doll has good hair. Like I am very, very impressed with this hair, but like it's very Jan, like, hang on, let me see if I can get it. I don't know if you remember how she walked, but it, like her hair would like swing back and forth like that. So um, anyway, I'm being a complete like imbecile right now. And now that I've done that, I can tell that whoever owned this doll before actually was a perfume wearer. So um, don't love that, but it will probably go away. But anyway, I might end up ultimately keeping these glasses on her. These are like Molly's glasses, but this like makes me think of Jan Brady. So like, I can't stop doing this. Look, like it's like a Pantene commercial. Um, but yeah, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take these off of her. Okay. Try not to rip her, uh, braid there, but yeah, anyway, let's get the glasses off of her because, um, I'm going to stop screwing around and we're actually going to talk about the doll a little bit more. But yeah, anytime I buy a doll, I'm not totally sure if I'm actually going to end up keeping it. Um, I'm just, I'm super picky and I don't get attached to things. Um, you know, especially if I haven't had them that long. Um, it's easy for me to kind of 
sell like buy something enjoy it for a little while and then sell it so that's why like you see like i'm always buying american girl of today dolls because i really like them but then ultimately they just kind of get like pushed aside and they don't like you know i just don't appreciate them as much after i've had them for like four weeks so a lot of times i end up selling them so i don't know if i will end up keeping this doll or not um, i'm kind of tempted to just uh, like at first sight because i really do like this doll like a lot more than I thought I was going to. I remember like um, when I kind of came to after um, like purchasing her, I was like, what did I just do? Like that was so stupid. Um, and I kind of regretted it a little bit, but um, now that I've got her in person and I'm looking at her, I'm really glad I got to at least see her um, up close because I think this is like a really popular iconic doll. Obviously they still make Julie um, at American Girl. You can buy one like the Be Forever version um, and they still have some of her collection which I guess that's what I was trying to talk about earlier is um, I'm really split on Julie's collection as I am with the 70s in general. Like there's some items uh, or like um, pieces in her collection that I really love that I think are so beautiful. Um, like the one, I don't remember the names of everything, but she's got like a jumpsuit that has sort of like a zip up turtleneck that goes underneath it. That is such a cool outfit and I probably will end up getting that. I really love her basketball outfit too, like that sporty, um, like with the like knee socks and everything. That's something I would probably ultimately like to get. And actually, I think my favorite thing in Julie's entire collection, which I was going to say maybe the roller skates, but actually I think my true, true favorite thing in Julie's collection um, is that, I forget what it's called, it's something like Quick Curl Barbie. It's basically like the Barbie head that's like from here up, like a decapitated Barbie um, that's like closer, I, I don't guess it's life size, but... Um, yeah, the, it was just like a, a Barbie head that was meant to be like, um, basically for hair play. Um, I swear I had like the 90s version of that when I was a kid. I don't know how I got it because I know my parents would have bought it for me, like wouldn't have bought it for me, but uh, my grandmother might have gotten me that at like Kmart or something. So that might have been how I got my hands on that. But I remember those, um, like the later versions of those toys. And I just, you know, I like... Um, you know, restoring doll hair. So I don't know, there's just something like kind of full circle about getting like the miniature American Girl version of that. Um, but yeah, that's like one of my favorite things in our collection. And um, even though I don't like the cardboard fireplaces, um, I did the, her Christmas thing came with um, one of those little ceramic Christmas trees, uh, like the vintage ones that have like little lights in them. Um, that I kind of want to get ultimately as well for like my Christmas display. I think that'd be such a cool thing to have. Um, so yeah, the more I'm talking about the things in her collection I want, I almost feel like I just want to keep this doll just so I have an excuse to get all those things because I can be kind of a purist when it comes to uh, purchasing, um, like buying a doll. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to like, I can be a purist when it comes to purchasing accessories. Um, I feel like they have to go with the doll that they were meant for. Like, um, I even said in a lot, like one of my last videos when I was a kid, obviously like that was a different thing. But now as an adult, I feel like it would be crazy to like buy a dress, like say for Julie and put it on Molly. I don't know why it would just bug me. So I feel like I need to have Julie to have an excuse to buy those things, which is completely insane. But, um, I do really like her. And like I said, my big thing with her is like, I can't get over how much I like her hair. I actually thought I wasn't going to like it that much because it's so, you know, just like, this is probably about as plain as a hairstyle can get. Um, it basically, you know, is just pin straight blonde hair. Um, but it's so silky and just has this like flow to it that I'm kind of addicted to. Um, but I'm going to try not to mess it up too much because there is always a chance that in two weeks I will be so over this and uh, try and sell her. And I don't want to ruin her in the meantime. But um, yeah, we're not going to take her clothes off or anything. But I'm just curious. I think I read in the Wikipedia article that she had like a, like interesting underwear. So I kind of want to see even though like... Oh yeah, so y'all, she's got like... It's not a tramp stamp, but... Is that not a little weird? Um, she's got like a butterfly tattoo basically on like the front of her. I don't like the word panties. Do y'all like the word panties? I think that's such a weird word. I'm just gonna say underwear. Um, but yeah, I don't know about the underwear on the stall. That's a little bit weird um, to me anyway, but uh, sound off in the comments. Um, but anyway, I don't know what else to say about her other than I think she's really, really pretty. 
Um, I will say, actually, she has pretty even eyes. Um, she's got the pinwheel style eyes that I don't think um, dolls like made in the 2000s are at risk of um, getting silver eye. But if they are, she doesn't have silver eye. The only thing I really don't love that Mattel did, um, I can even get past like the vinyl being harder because I can see how that can make them feel a little bit higher quality. But I do not care for the black like wire like I don't know how to describe them but the eyelashes I do not like what they did to the eyelashes um I don't know I'm sure it was to like standardize them over like all the different dolls they were doing so you know like in the like olden timey days from the stuff that I collect like when you get an old Felicity like the first editions she has red eyelashes like um her hair like they're I don't know if they're, no, they're not like an exact match, but they are like a color specific to Felicity. Um, and maybe that was part of like why they made that change. And again, you know, maybe there were some issues with things getting damaged. I feel like I don't see like the, um, I should show her up close. I feel like I'm running my mouth and not showing you the doll. Um, but maybe there were some issues um, with the eyelashes and like not being as, um durable maybe when they had the, like the softer eyelashes but those are the ones I really like um you know I just to me they are like a little more realistic and I think with these 18 inch dolls you know they're not hyper realistic obviously but I think you know you get a little bit more realism with these than you would say like something that's more like of a one six scale like a Barbie um so, you know, I do like soft hair and things like that. So that would probably be my least favorite thing about Julie. Although <laughs> I always complain about this too, maybe never on camera, but I think American Girl dolls have really ugly feet. Like has any, have y'all ever like stopped to actually notice like what their feet look like? They're like absolutely terrible. Um, so the fact that Julie has open toed shoes on, like I'm not a fan of because I really, cannot stand the way American Girl doll toes look like yuck um but other than that like I really I'm really kind of into her um you know I still go like back and forth whether I want to collect all the historical dolls um because like I've said before my main goal with my collection is to try and get basically first editions of everything from my childhood and I just kind of put that cap on like 1993 slash 1994 because I remember when Addie was released so I know that I was still into dolls in like 1993 and I remember wanting Addie so 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 bad and I finally got one and She's sitting up here. I actually changed her since the last video. I put her in her prototype dress in the last video. If you want to watch that, you know, you can maybe go back in time on my YouTube channel and watch that video too. It's very long, but you know, I like making long hangout videos. Anyway, uh, but yeah, I ended up changing her because I got um, the work, like her work dress, a first edition, and it came with the shoes and everything. And I got it for a good deal. So um, I got her put in that the other day and she's looking really, really cute right now. So um, anyway, this isn't an Addy video. This is a Julie video. Um, but anyway, so um, yeah, it's not typical for me to buy things that like were released after 1994, but every once in a while, like I said, I just kind of get a, like catch a wild hair or whatever the saying is. Um, and I just buy something completely random and that's what this doll is. But, um, yeah, so the jury's still out if I will keep her or continue to collect more of the modern. Um, and I say, when I say modern, I just mean anything for like after 1994. Um, but yeah, I I may and I may not. I'm not sure yet. I'll prob What I'll probably do is buy a bunch of them and then change my mind and sell them and then buy them all again. And it's just this vicious circle that I'm in. But, um, you know, I'm having fun doing it. So I'm not complaining. But um, yeah, like I said, it's really kind of stupid that I don't have Josefina yet. And even though Josefina is not a childhood doll, she is a like Pleasant Roland era American Girl doll. So um, you know, it feels more appropriate to have like Josefina and Kit um, than maybe Julie. So um, that's all to say it's not like I love this doll more than those. Um, part of the reason I haven't gotten Josefina yet is actually because I love her collection so much. I feel like once I get the doll, like I'm like already gonna have to earmark like $1,500 to get everything that I want for Josefina. So uh, I'm trying to wait um, until, you know, I've got um, other things like, you know, just the main like bread and butter of my collection. Like I'm trying to wait until I get that kind of more complete before like diving into like Josefina's world. Um, 
And then, yeah, I probably, I don't know. I, I struggle with Kit. I actually really don't like Kit's haircut because it's so short, but I know that's controversial because she's so popular. I mean, she's cute, but um, I'm just, I don't know. I really like her collection though. And I think it's very big. And so that's kind of my problem is like, I can be kind of a completist and a purist at the same time. So not only do I want everything, I want everything first edition and it just gets to be like so many things. And so... I don't know. That's kind of why I'm dragging my feet on them. And again, why it's like so incredibly stupid that I bought Julie, but I do like her. So we will see if she stays or not. But um, I really do like her. And like I said, she reminds me of the Brady Bunch movie. And like I said, that's one of my favorite movies. And if you haven't seen it before, I think it's on Amazon like Prime Video. Um, so it's pr I think you can watch it like for free or like there's ways of watching it. Um, that's your homework assignment is to go watch that movie. Even if you've seen it, go watch it. It's so, so funny. Uh, Gary Cole's in it. Oh, Shelley Long. Um, and RuPaul actually has like kind of a cameo, like a small part in it. And it's just, it is so, so funny. And it takes you back in time twice because you've got like, the Brady Bunch, which is the 70s, plus like the it being like the 90s version of it. It is just such a trip and it is so funny. Uh, we watched it as actually we watched it, I think, on New Year's Day um, and we laughed our asses off because it's just so good. But um, anyway, I'm trying to think there's like if there's anything else to say about Julie. Um, yeah, I think that about covers it. Um, if there's anything else you want to see about her, let me know. I can maybe like do uh, like a short video um, if there's anything else to see. Um, I'm not really like amazing at reviewing like the newer American Girl dolls because I'm just like, it's Julie. Like, whereas like the oldest stuff, I can be like, oh, this is the thing from 1986. And what makes this different from 1987 is this, like there's just so many tiny little nuances of that old stuff. And I'm like, I got Julie. Okay, bye. <laughs> so um, anyway, I'll probably cut it off there. Um, I'll give you one last look at her um, just in case you're thinking of buying one. Even without having seen the Be Forever one um, in person, I can say it's probably a safe bet um, that if you like more historically accurate, like vintage looking things, I would say the like the first edition of Julie is probably going to be the one you want to get. Um, the denim on like this or her bell bottoms um, is really good quality, too. Um, so I, you know, I just, I think this is probably the one to go with if you're really into collecting um, the historicals and, you know, you like the historical accuracy of everything. And then maybe like the Be Forever Julie would be maybe if you were buying it for a child um, and just wanting to get something that's like maybe a little bit more colorful. Um, I don't know. That's, that's probably what I would recommend. But definitely um, if you're buying for yourself, go for the first edition. Um, yeah. And I think if you're on the fence about doing it, just try and find a good deal on it. And if you, you know, don't like her, just throw her back on eBay. Um, I'm sure somebody will buy her. But anyway, okay, I'm getting ran rambly. So I'm probably going to cut it a little bit short today, um, just so that I'm not like talking your ear off and you're like wanting to go... Um, Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and, you know, checking out the new Jan Brady with me. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm just going to call her Jan um, because, I mean, why not? Um, but anyway, I've got a ton more videos. Um, I've been doing YouTube for a few months now and I've been really going at it pretty hard. So um, I would love it um, if you're still watching um, and you made it this far. I think it would be an awesome idea if you subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Um, it's a big goal of mine for the like first part of this year. Year. Um, so if you would join me along for my YouTube journey, um, both me and Jan, or uh, let's use proper grammar on this channel, both Jan and I would love that. Um, and yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all the things that every YouTuber beg you, begs you to do. Um, usually they do it without like misspeaking, but I'm probably not even going to edit this down much because it's late on a Sunday and I want to get this up by Tuesday. So anyway, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. Um, please take care of yourself and I hope to see you very, very soon. Bye for now.